Welcome back to The Home Recording Show. This is episode 305. I am John Tidy. And I'm Ryan Canestro. And so in this episode, we're going to talk about on-set safety. Ryan is a professional uh, sound mixer on set, working on films, TV shows, that sort of thing. Uh, but before we get into that, I uh, just want to thank everyone for supporting us on the Buy Me Coffee link, uh, link in the description of the video or on the website. If you want to support the show, it's five bucks to buy us a virtual coffee and your name goes into the end of the show and a list in the video description. And we just started. We already have people doing yeah. it. So thanks, guys. It's it's really awesome. It's great to see that we still have an audience after such a long break and uh, we're having a lot of fun doing the show. We only took five years off. It, yeah. Sure, five years. It seems like a million years and also it seems like just yesterday at the same time. For sure. So yeah, let's jump into the today's topic. Especially today, safety is such a big concern. Um, there's two particularly big issues that come to mind with that. But also I'm interested in how do you like keep yourself healthy and safe on a you know personal level rather than the mandated or the the protocols involved with working on these large films and stuff. Yeah. So obviously the big thing right now is COVID. Um, it's constant testing. Uh, we have, we're divided into different zones. Um, some sets do pods, some do sets do zones. Um, there's an A zone and a B zone. B zone is not allowed to be near talent at all, or even on set when talent's anywhere near it. Uh, a zone obviously has to interact with talent, put microphones on people, cameras have to be near talent, things like that. The A zone is tested more frequently than the B zone. Um, people are definitely uh, in different zones. Um, the pod thing's even more aggressive where certain people can only use certain bathrooms and they, they break things down. So if someone were to test positive, they know which pod you're part of. Um, there's a couple different schools of thought, but it's always confusing. I work on a lot of different shows. I'll go from one show to the next and then do a commercial and then do different things all the time. Each new show is a new testing. Um, sometimes you have to test two or three times before you can step on set. Um, some are rapid tests, some are PCR tests. It's, it's madness. I've had over 200 tests since the pandemic started. I'm, I'm, I did a, a count and it's right in that ballpark of I'm either have had 200 tests or approaching 200 tests at this point. Well, I, I feel really thankful that I've actually not had to test at all. Um, wow. I don't know if I've ever had it, uh, but, but yeah, I haven't had to go anywhere where I need to, to get tested. Uh, traveling is not something that I'm interested in doing <laughs> at all. So, so yeah, 200 tests that, that would suck. That's the, the swab up the nose, back of the nasal cavity. Sort of thing. Well, most of the tests are not that aggressive and a few of them have been. So um, if you have to do the the rapid PCR, they go inside your brain and then a little bit further. <laughs> it's very aggressive, very uncomfortable. I've only had about five of those. So that, that hasn't been too bad. The beautiful part of a lot of the testing for my job is they have to pay us on any non-work day that we have to go test. So Going in, getting your nose swabbed, you make, you know, half or a third of a day rate just to go do that. So makes it a little, little less upsetting. Right. Yeah. And then I guess if they're split into A and B groups, there's also A and B like catering completely separate or what? Um, no, but well now catering, you can't go grab your own things and they're behind plastic. So they hand things out. Uh, you can't just go up to craft service and grab things. There is a window, a guy, uh, you know, plastic sheet and they'll grab everything for you. So everything's different. I mean, you used to be able to go to craft service, just kind of browse whatever you wanted to grab. And now you have to look at like a menu. So it's made me eat less crap food. So there's one so good thing. I'll take that benefit it, as well. I, I was yeah. actually just about to ask if there's any, I mean, this is all necessary, but it's also like super precautious. Um, it's also kind of wasteful. A lot of disposable items, um, you know, tons of yep. money, they have to pay for everyone to get tested multiple times, all this stuff. But yep, it's adding up to twenty percent to every budget. So hopefully the 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 time that you do have on set, actually recording and everything, everyone's more focused and never, everyone's more committed to it. I would think. Yeah, well, I mean, it's probably about the same, but um, there've been especially this last thing with Omicron. Everyone's getting it. 
So we had the show push two weeks already. We just started this last week and people kept popping positive and then they'd bring in replacements to fill in for those people. And just on the first COVID test to bring in the replacement, those people were showing up positive. So it was hard to find people. So they had to push and, you know, everyone that was, you know, got it, had to wait 10 days after a negative test and the whole thing. Luckily, the two weeks got us the majority of our crew back, but it keeps happening. Um, It's this last wave has been insane. So, you know, on set, everyone stays, tries to stay six feet away from each other. Um, Everyone's been tested. Everyone's masked. At lunch, everyone sits six plus feet apart. You can't even sit next to people anymore. Um, It's it's serious. And it's the only way we're going to be able to get production done. And this is one of the last true crafts that is handmade. We have these large groups of people that all get together and do this massive task together. And um, I mean, aside from being in a factory or something like that, but everyone's got to be spaced apart. And this is a tough job to do, being spaced apart. For sure. It, it seems like, you know, they're taking it very seriously and and it, and it is um, it's worth that extra effort. Yeah, because if your people get sick, especially your cast, shield's over. You're down two plus weeks. So any other benefits besides eating a little bit healthier on set? You know, if this all ever ends, <laughs> what what's Ever. going to stay? What would you like to see like protocols or, or precautions uh, staying in place forever? On set in general, I mean, just getting away from the COVID part, safety is a huge factor. We, for the union, uh, we have to take safety classes every year um, to, to be able to work, to be able to keep our status as a union member. So we have to go through hearing safety classes. We have to go through harassment safety classes. We have to go through general, um, you know, dangers on the job classes every year over and over again and keep up on all of our safety protocols. If you do specific jobs where you have to go up ladders or things like that, there's additional safety classes you have to take. Um, there's OSHA requirements. It's, it's a very safe environment because of all of the awareness, all of the classes, all of the education and accidents still happen. Uh, I've been on a set, uh, many sets where people got hurt. There was one where props was setting up this big display with all this glass and everything on it. And one of the shelves broke as she was setting it up and she, she got cut up pretty bad straight to the hospital. Um, another guy was loading a truck and there was, um, a piece of metal sticking out like a, a, a round tube. It got him right in the eyeball, just right in his head. Um, just loading a truck on one of our regular days. That's yeah. Things happen. Horrifying. Um, and on, at least on that one, I know production stepped up and, um, got a world-class eye doctor to help him out. I don't know how that one resolved. I mean, when there's a medical issue, things are pretty secret and hush hush, but there've been a lot of, you know, there, there is a lot of moving parts. You're, you're talking about bringing in 20 trucks and loading them into a parking lot and all these moving parts and people unloading things having to happen fast. It's a, a an environment where it's this huge task that has to happen among many departments and a lot of communication. And it's amazing. It goes as well as it does. But if you're not paying attention, um, people get hurt and it's, it's rare. And I've only seen it a handful of times, but it's happened. Something that I'd like to see um, kind of become more standardized in like recording studios is what I've seen on set. Uh, when you're handing something to someone else, you wait for them to say, got it. Or, mm-hmm. or something like that before you let go. And, you know, there's so many times you're tossing things to your assistant in the studio and it's like, or, you know, you hand something to them, both people fumble it just because you didn't take the time to say, got it. So, yeah, you know, yeah, every time super I, simple I things give an like order that. to my boom operator, copy, understood, got it. You know, um, yesterday I was pulling a cable and uh, someone asked me and I said, yeah. And he said, was that yes or no? I said, affirmative, you know, because I wasn't clear. Yeah. So it is that kind of thing. And it wasn't some major important thing. I was just pulling a cable, but clear communication is important. Yeah. I got to do that with my wife because she, she's always like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, it's affirmative or negatory. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like when handing off data to the uh, DIT at the end of the night, you want to make sure you hand off your cards. You want to make sure 
they have, you know, it's in their hand, you're touching it in their hand. Here, here is the audio data. Here's today's day, you know, that kind of thing. Um, it is important. And the end of the day, all of this work, all of this equipment, all of these trucks for me is handing off a digital card with ones and zeros on it. That is the end result of all of the work. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. Yeah. I could just arrange those ones and zeros on a card before we had to do all that and just hand that off. That would have been so much simpler. It's crazy how much, how much work goes into an end result that's, you know, just such a small thing. Like recording studio, I can't really think of what the comparison is because now it's not even on a USB stick or a, it used to be a CD or hand them the vinyl, the vinyl test pressing. Hard drive? Or the or the analog tape at the end of it, but it's, it's a hard drive. I never considered it like that. Yeah. And it's because I have to hand off that little card every day and it's just a SD card or a CF card. Like here's everything I did. Here's what this team of eight people did this day. Everyone working, running, flying microphones, pulling cable, all for this end result. All right. So how about your personal well-being how do you keep your feet from hurting at the end of the day or, or anything like that super important question i was just talking to john off camera uh this is my first week back on this new show and it was only a four-day week because we had the holiday on monday but we were multiple locations the very first day we were on two separate locations we shot a thing loaded back in the trailer went to another location shot a thing uh, it's it's a lot and then go home say hi to the kids go to sleep, wake up eight hours later, right back on set, doing the thing again for 12 more hours. Um, and we did all locations this week. Only the last day was stage. So that's loading stuff into a truck, pulling stuff off the truck every morning. Having comfortable shoes, important. If you're not wearing running shoes, which I have been now, I'll put like uh, foam pads inside my shoes. Uh, just being on your feet for that, that length of time. Uh, make sure you stay hydrated. Make sure um, I've got a uh, cool brand, K-U-H-L brand clothes for outside shoots. It's amazing. It uh, breathes. Uh, it covers, you know, long sleeve, long pants, even in hot weather to for sun protection, floppy hat. When you're going to be out in the sun for those, I mean, sunburn is a real thing. I've got sunblock in my bag. I've got, basically I carry a whole first aid kit with me and bigger productions will have all that too. But when I do smaller things like commercial shoots or sports shoots or whatever, most people don't think about that. I yeah. bring it all. I'm like, here's, here's sunscreen for everybody. Um, it's just miserable when you don't have all of those things. I carry my own water jug with me. Got it right here. This guy is always strapped in my backpack with a carabiner full of water, even if, set, if they have water on set, just in case they don't. Yeah. Um, I always have my, my coffee with me. I bring that with me. Um, I, I, I always want to make sure I have everything I need because a 12-hour day is miserable if you don't feel good, if you're getting sunburned, if you're dehydrated, mm -hmm. murder. If your feet hurt, murder. Yeah, I've I've done only a little bit of a boom op on a, a low budget film thing. I can't remember if it was three or four days, but it was just exhausting. I felt like I was shorter by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but my feet were killing me and my shoulders and my arms. And I was definitely not regularly doing any exercise. So like, yeah, being up on a Apple box with my arms above my head for, you know, it's, it's two minutes at a time, but yeah. it's, it's still like a lot. So I probably still well, have back from that. Oh yeah. And that was, yeah, I that to... was <laughs> 2011. Yeah. I try to stay in good shape. I, I run several times a week. Um, I, I, I want to be in good shape because if you're not, you know, it'll get you. Um, just making sure you have your, your stamina, um, super important. Like I try to walk 10,000 steps a day and I just did this job in Las Vegas on the convention floor, a lot of walking. I was doing 22,000 steps a day and on my light day was 18,000. So it's nuts. If you have bad shoes, then that's yeah. terrible. And if you're only walking 2000 steps a day and then you have to walk 20,000 that day, you're just going to be destroyed. I'm I'm pretty much at uh, about a, a year straight walking every day. Some days it's still tough. I I don't go anywhere near that much. I, I walk maybe uh, one to 
four kilometers a day. Um, often it's like taking the kids to school, but on the non-school so that's like day, fifty miles, right? In American? No, it's that's like uh, <laughs> probably like two, two or three. Yeah, yeah two. Yeah. Um, or, or otherwise, I'll, I'll walk after after dinner, and just you know, it, it helps my brain doing that walking, and it's a great time to catch up on podcasts or listen to new music. I was having that conversation with my son yesterday. It's weird. Like you would think that if you sit around, you save up your energy. But the way our bodies work is you have to use them. And then that actually gives you more energy, which is yeah. counterintuitive. But unless you're moving, you're, you're going to just want to stay sitting. Exercise is something that I wish I prioritized in high school because Me I'm too. only getting into it now at, yeah. at 36 and 37. I didn't realize how important it was. And, I, yeah. and it's like, I, I have to do it now. And, um, but also I'm still super low energy because of it. <laughs> not because of it, because I don't know, because it's not enough. But there's no time like now to get started. And once you get into a groove, you feel better. You just do. And even at our advanced ages now, it helps. It helps a lot. Yeah. So we talked about exercise, water, good shoes, uh, staying away from the sun if possible. Rest. I know sometimes the turnaround's pretty quick, but you need to get your eight hours in. Um, I, I know a 12 hour day plus a drive. You want to spend time with the family or friends or catch up on something or watch a show just for like your sanity. But sometimes you just got to take that sleep and just go right back into it. Yeah. Just get the sleep. On the topic of um, avoiding the sun and things like that, is that something you can ask to like, uh, you know, if they need you at a certain, you know, pointing the boom mic from a certain angle, but that's directly in the sun, do you try to figure out another way to do it so that you're not in the sun or just? Or just deal with it? Well, as a boom op, you always want to boom opposite key light. So if you're out in the sun, you want to boom from the opposite side that the sun's, sun is coming in from. So you're kind of predetermined on that. But make sure you're wearing a hat. Make sure you have your sunscreen. Make sure you have your arms and legs covered. You know, that's that's a big part of it. If you, you know you're going to be working outside, protect yourself. Don't show up in uh, your T-back Speedo. And, uh, you know, no hat, like the, the Star Wars guy yeah. in the pink shorts. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a funny image, but you can't work like that. <laughs> well, people in the 70s used to just be like, they'd go out in the sun all the time. They'd, there's, they'd get that nice dark tan and just be like, I don't need sunscreen. I'm dark. Right. But I don't, I don't think that played out in the long term no. for them. Right. Booming all day with a cigarette in their mouth yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> When, when beer was okay on set. Sure. And, and that's another thing. Um, in the 70s and 80s, there was a lot of drugs and drinking on set. And that's, that's a pretty zero uh, tolerance deal now, even though every now and then you'll see some people smoking weed, which is like, seriously, guys? And you'll, you'll smell it. And um, I don't know if people get in trouble or not, but I would not let anyone on my crew be impaired in any way on set. Um, super not okay. It's rare now, but there used to be a lot of drugs on set and that was kind of okay. That was the thing people did. Um, like especially things like cocaine that was, that was big in the eighties and it was kind of a commonplace thing. Yeah. But, but everyone thought it's... that they were keeping it a secret. Well, everyone yeah. knew. <laughs> yeah. I've still seen it. Uh, there was a show where I'd mic'd up a bunch of dancers and production was actually giving them cocaine. We were going into like hour 16 and I'm, listening to these people and this one girl did a line and she goes oh shit you're mic'd and the other girl goes fuck you you're mic'd too and then they kind of came out and were like looking at me to see if i was listening and i just you know played it off like i didn't know anything was going on <laughs> but they were obviously doing cocaine and arguing about it when they were mic'd not a good idea they were already in probably not yeah <laughs> It still happens. And again, that creates a massive safety issue. People are going to make mistakes if they're impaired. They're going to be overtired the next day if they're pushing too hard, chemically induced. You know, it's, it's not a good look. The other thing that's been in the news recently has been the, the gun safety. I don't know if you mm. want to get into that. Oh, yeah. If anyone doesn't know, there was a, a, a fatal shooting, accidental gun discharge on set on kind of a lower budget film that had um, uh, Alec Baldwin 
it seemed like the entire thing could have been avoided and it never should have come to that. But uh, yeah, you probably know more about this than I do. Yeah, um, I've, I've read a bunch about it and there's certainly been a lot of talk in the unions about it. But even when a fake gun, and they should all be fake guns, but even when, when any kind of gun comes on set, they will hold it up, say, we have a gun on set. I want everyone to be fully aware of this. Only me or my assistant is to touch it unless I hand it to talent and then it comes back to me. No one else is to touch this gun, except for right now, anyone that wants to check it to make sure that it is not loaded, that it is not a real weapon, that there is no firing pin, will have that opportunity right now. And they will, they will do that. They will make that announcement. They'll come around. You'll be able to inspect it yourself. That's what usually happens when there's a gun on set. I did a shoot, uh, I mean, yesterday or a day before yesterday, we were shooting in a backyard and there's a scene where a girl's playing acoustic guitar next to a fire pit, a standard home fire pit. We had two fire safety people on that set, fire extinguishers. Everyone had to stop. We had to have a safety meeting about turning on the fire pit. This isn't some huge flame. This is that much fire coming off the top of a fire pit in a backyard. And that's the kind of safety there is on a union set. Um, what I heard about that other shoot was that there was some kind of turnover or employees striking or something about working conditions and several people left the show and they brought in some last minute replacements. And that's, that's what happened there. And some information fell between the cracks or the standard safety protocols were not followed. Something to that effect. But it ended and, up with Alec Baldwin pointing the gun at the camera, shooting and killing a woman. The director of photography. Yeah. Never should have happened. Never should have happened. And I do know uh, someone that was supposed to be working on that film and may have been there instead of her. Um, that is someone I've worked with before. So, I mean, it's just, it's crazy that it's, it's that close to home. Uh -huh. And this is the same thing that happened to uh, Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee, um, during the making of a film. Uh, there was, in this case, it wasn't a bullet that was in the gun, but it was the blank that fires and the, there's a paper element, some kind of paper. And there was basically a wad of paper in there, but then the blank shot that out as a projectile yeah. and it killed him. So, the barrel wasn't clear and yeah, it's still close range and it's real gunpowder. So... Yeah, anything can happen. But these these sorts of accidents are very rare. And yeah. it usually it comes down to, you know, these are the things that create these these safety protocols. These are the reasons why they exist. There's so many action films that have real guns uh, with blanks or some other way, some sort of projectile. You know, it has a muz muzzle flash. There is the potential for the same sort of accident to happen. And they'll mm -hmm. fire... 10,000 bullets in this film and no fatalities, no injuries at all related to the yeah. guns. With computers, muzzle flashes, super easy. <laughs> it's like yeah. visual effects artists, first day. <laughs> that, that's the intern's job, first day, just to do yeah. it. So like. Well, and the scariest things happen on the lower budget things. Yeah. So big union shoots, it's extremely rare. There are protocols, not to say it doesn't happen, but it's much more rare. We, we have a safety meeting every single day on set for the most mundane things. So when it's something really big, explosions, things like that, it gets super serious. Yeah. Um, but lower budget shoots, I've been on a couple where things did not feel safe. And I've straight up said, I am not comfortable with that. And it's rare, but it's come up. Um, there was one where they wanted us to go in the ocean at night with equipment and they had talent jumping off a cliff with, I mean, no safety protocols. I, I, I was very unhappy with a lot of that and voiced my concerns. Um, I definitely didn't go in the water. I'm like, I'll put one wireless mic on top of the camera. And if the camera guy wants to go in, that's his business, but I am not going in that water. It was freezing cold. It was like 40 degrees outside. The water was freezing cold. The waves were huge. I was like, there's no way I'm walking anywhere near that without gear. I'm definitely not bringing gear in there. There was another day where it was a small crew 
and they were pulling electrical lines in the rain and leaving them on the ground. And I very rarely step outside of my department, but on that day, I went and bagged the connections, took them off the ground, made sure that we were safe because we could have all been electrocuted on that driveway. There was another time where someone was setting up a, a flag above Talent's head, and I saw that they were doing it in the reverse order. You always have the C-stand knuckle on the right. So if something's going to fall forward, it tightens, right. not loosens, and then falls right out. And I said, yeah, make sure the knuckle's on the right. And the guy started arguing with me. And I said, no, the knuckle's on the right, so it tightens. And he said, no, it's on the left. And I put my hand on the flag and pushed it right over. And I said, the knuckle goes on the right. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, I've, I've been around for a while. My dad was a grip. This is something that I could still hear him yelling in my head if I set up a stand and there's not a sandbag on it. Sandbag! Got it. Sandbag. Make it safe. Right. Always. Speaking of sandbags, something I learned recently about sandbags is that sandbags can't touch the ground. Is that right? Yeah. They, well, they, when they're on the stand, they shouldn't be. No. Okay. It makes them less effective if they're touching the ground. You can't. Yeah, because you want the full weight of the bag on the stand. Okay. And if they're touching the ground, then that you're losing some of that weight. I think that's something that people wouldn't get unless they're trained on that sort of thing. Yeah. And the light that's above my head right now on this stand, there is a sandbag. And on this stand right here, there's a sandbag on it. So it doesn't fall over. Even in my garage with this horrible blanket behind me as a backdrop, everything's safe. Good to know. Anything else related to this? Um, this has obviously not been specifically, um, you know, on topic of sound and recording. Yeah, it's all the things around. Yeah. You know, getting that, that sound. But, you know, I, I've seen dangerous things in recording studios, hanging mics overhead in ways that they could easily fall over. I mean, you take a condenser to the dome, you're not going to be happy about it. It's probably not going to kill you. Um, I did have a, a big stand fall on me before. Um, someone set it up against a wall. And as I was just leaving for the day, it fell over and hit me across the back. Luckily, the knuckle missed my head by about an inch, but the the flat part of the stand hit me in the back. It hurt, but I mean, it wasn't like I was damaged or anything. It was just like, oh, my back was tender for a day or two. Yeah. But if that would have hit me in the head, that could have knocked me out. Be aware of your surroundings always. And it's it's a good lesson in life too. But especially when people are moving fast to get tasks accomplished, in a high pressure environment, mistakes can get made. So be aware. Yeah, I think the most, probably the most common thing that I've seen is data loss in the studio. Mm -hmm. I think I've seen someone walk into the counterweight on the back of a big, big mic stand. Yeah. But other than that, I can't think of anything that I've witnessed firsthand. Well, we've definitely seen people get shocked because of improper grounding. Like, oh, uh, yeah. you know, in, the, in your garage band days, you put your mouth on the mic and you're touching your guitar. You know, that stuff's dangerous too. And, and it could be a lot worse in some cases. You could really get zapped or hurt. Yeah, I think it was, uh, I think the first time I saw that was in high school. Um, mm -hmm. the, the mixer they had in the music room didn't have a ground. So, uh, so yeah, the dynamic mic, someone probably pressed phantom power on it or something like that. I don't know how exactly that it happens, but there was a, they were getting a shock every time they touched the mic. Yeah. And sometimes if you are plugged into two different circuits, like your guitar amps in one circuit and your PA is in a different circuit and they're yeah. wired incorrectly or an old building with um, uh, improper grounding or separate grounds, then you could draw the current a different direction. And that's through you. I think that's a good place to end it. The takeaway of this is be safe. Be safe. Um, yeah. Simple as that. Live to fight another day. It's not worth dying over. It's not worth, yeah. uh, you know, burning out over somebody else's art. <laughs> yeah. And a little bit of preparation, um, you know, a little bit of forethought and pay attention to your surroundings and just be safe and you'll have a much better experience overall. Yeah. People will respect you for being careful. <laughs>